We try so hard to escape the realities of life by embracing fantasies constructed from broken people who are also trying to piece their lives together every single day. Life is strange. Sometimes those fantasies can end up shaping the direction of somebody's life. You see, I was greatly shaped by those visual media influences I took in as a kid. As a first-generation Asian American and the firstborn son in my family, There are a lot of cultural and societal things I'm only just sorting out now in my third decade on planet Earth. All my life, I've been, I I felt like I was following a path that was laid out in front of me, a character arc written for a character trope I was slotted into. I was a hero in a game that wasn't customizable in ways that mattered. My Core identity was coded into me, and no matter how much I wanted to deviate or evolve from my first persona, I was reeled back into my cell by an invisible force constructed by the society around me. Like a lot of millennials after 2020, my mental health therapy sessions have strangely become a a badge of honor for self-preservation. I'm actually doing pretty well in life if you look at it on a monetary scale. I own two electric cars, bought a single-family home in Southern California, and can support two dogs all the way from Korea. So why does my heart feel so dang heavy all the time? My therapist asks me the big old question of whether I'm actually happy doing the things I do in life. Struggling filmmaker, reluctant engineering technician, self-proclaimed tech journalist, and floundering adult. (laughs) Those are just some modern hashtag thingies one could associate with Alexander Kwok. I have a lot of goals I want to accomplish, but I've also lost sight of something over the last few years. My therapist said I needed to stop my grind and do things that make me feel something again. So I told her I'd try to rediscover what I was missing. Remember how I said earlier that visual media greatly influenced who I am now? I used to watch a lot of TV and play video games on the weekends as a kid. That was surprisingly one of those 90s parenting guidelines my folks didn't align with during that era. Sure, I had limits to what I could watch and time frames in which I could play, but for the most part, I grew up with free access to Rugrats, Doug, Monster Rancher, and Power Rangers to name a few of my faves. On the gaming end of things, ever since I was young, I gravitated towards games with tremendous storytelling focus. Naturally, Square and their Final Fantasy games hooked me in. JRPG shaped my teen years with franchises like Suikoden, Lunar, and the countless amounts of Game Boy Advance gems. I took what my therapist said to heart and, and dug a little deeper inside. The things that shaped me in my adolescence and my teen years were undeniable. It's easy for anyone to recognize who knew me. Yet, I can't even recall what the last game that resonated with me on an emotional scale was. In fact, I couldn't even remember the last time I played a game for more than 10 hours not named Stardew Valley, and the last time I even played that was in 2017. The last JRPG that I I played from start to finish was Suikoden Tear Crest on the Nintendo DS. Some games just stick with you. I may not remember all the stars in Tear Crest, but I'll forever remember the feels I got inside that castle base on that eve of the final battle with all the heroes that I gathered from my journey for one last peaceful night together. From the hollow, empty halls in the beginning of the game to a now-filled castle with warmth and personality, I didn't want that game to end. That was 2009. 2009 me and 2023 me are in dramatically different spots in life. The responsibilities and experience difference makes me ponder what similarities we even have. I just can't bring myself to get past a couple of hours of playing any games nowadays. Don't get me wrong, I, I, I still try to play games. There's so many awesome games out there that attract me every single year. I have a Nintendo Switch, an Xbox Series S, a PS4, and a gaming PC. It's not like I lost my love for gaming. On the contrary, games have evolved to bring storytelling to a whole other level. It's something I only dreamed about as a kid. In filmmaking, we have something called the inciting incident. It's the event that sets the entire story in motion. 
This is what Hollywood used to say is the do or die moment that either hooks the audience into the entire storyline or leads them out of the room. Now that I'm in my 30s, I've realized that however great an inciting incident is, it just doesn't really matter. If the person receiving it doesn't have the heart to let the story in, it's dead on arrival no matter how great it is. I've been, I've been a little broken due to the vigors of adult life. I lost my capacity to take in stories. So flash forward to the night before I was scheduled to hop on a plane to Toronto and I'm setting up my Valve Steam Deck for emulation with nostalgic PS2 titles. This was my chance to replace some of these titles that shaped me as a kid. I talked to my therapist about this and she said, you got to play more games then if that's the thing. As I was wrapping up, I, I checked up the Steam store and Final Fantasy VII Remake is on the front page. I actually have the PS4 title sealed from launch day that I have not had time to play. See how pathetic my life has become? <laughs> I thought to myself, hell, why not? So I purchased another copy for my Steam Deck. Then I noticed another game on the front page that Valve recommended to me. It was anime-themed, but what really caught my eye was the main character walking through a crowded street in Shibuya, Japan. I was in Japan at that very spot in 2019 and was in awe that I could supposedly do that same thing, digitally walk through Tokyo in a game without realism. A little skeptical of it, I decided to buy it and just test it out, whether I could really just roam around in Tokyo like that video showed. To be honest, though, I, I thought I probably wouldn't even open the game. I have so many unopened new games from the last half decade that it's like a graveyard of sealed titles on my shelf. Good for collection value, though. During my trip, I began playing Final Fantasy VII Remake for a bit, and I got to have some fun new times with Jesse. <laughs> I will say that it was a fun, somewhat nostalgic five or so hours I played off FF7 Remake, but nothing too mesmerizing for me. If I was back home, I probably would be working on a Subnautics video over actually playing that game. Then something kind of peculiar happened. I started up Persona 5 Royal. At first, it was just to satiate my curiosity of that whole Tokyo roaming thing. But then next thing I knew, I'm back home. Thanksgiving had passed. Christmas even passed. I actually haven't written or shot or edited or released a video during the entire two-week holiday period. Getting off my weekly schedule would have normally given me tremendous anxiety. Deadlines would fill my chest up with weight, and I would not be able to like shed it off until I got it done. You can imagine how filling up a YouTube channel with weekly content can become a bit of an anxiety-filled coffin. I don't remember the last Christmas where I actually took a longer break than the single holiday without working, uh, doing something for some nautics, or just enjoying a day off for no reason. It must have been my last year in college, like 10 plus years ago. Since early schooling, we're taught we need to work hard. We're taught that some things we choose to do have negative worth. This slacking off thing is bad. We're taught we have responsibilities that require sacrifices. If we deviate from that path, chaos happens. Your future collapses. But I'm okay. The world didn't end because I chose to play a video game at night instead of doing extra work to progress my career. I've spent nearly 100 hours the last few months basically in digital therapy. I don't say this lightly as somebody who highly values what visual media can accomplish, but Persona 5 Royal truly helped my mental health. I'm not going to talk about JRPG mechanics that make it great or tactical strategies that the franchise is known for, as there are plenty of reviews for this game on gaming channels. What I want to focus on is how this video game and gaming as a technology in general can be a source of healing that can ironically bring us back into reality. You see that walking in Shibuya thing I wanted to try out? That actually is in the game, but it's so much more than just that. We play as a morally just high school student who has his world thrown into chaos because of those morals that he follows. The Persona 5 Royal itself is a game about healing. Every character we befriend has their own set of self-doubt instilled inside of them. The trauma they all hold in their hearts is so relatable because we as humans have experienced all of these emotions in one form or another. But where this is special is that Atlas lets us experience this on a day-to-day -day basis. 
unlike a movie or a big action video game that skips over the mundane daily life for the next big story beat, Persona embraces these trivial things like hanging out after school to plant vegetables with a friend, or going to a theater to watch a movie to learn to be more charming. We as players get to choose what we want to do in this life. Want to go work after school to make a bit more money and be more proficient at that job thanks to that experience that you're gaining? Sure, you can do that. You can choose to do that. Want to go to the library and study with a classmate to increase your knowledge for the upcoming exam week while also getting to bond with somebody that you actually have potential chemistry building with? You can choose to do that too. These are things that we do every day in our own lives. These are things that we did in our lives in the past. These are things that we were denied the ability to do. I had group tutoring sessions during my school days. The difference is that I didn't choose to be there. I was put there by my parents. My whole after-school life activities were dictated by my parents and the teachers to lead me to what they thought would be a successful life which literally means do everything it takes to get into a good college. (laughs) To have that power in your own hands now, to make these decisions again, to have that chance to shape your life is so freeing, even if it's through a digital avatar. I have to say that I, I don't normally identify with main characters in games, but this one felt a little bit too close to home for comfort. A listen-first outcast who seemingly draws in people of all personalities that constantly tell him, I don't know why, but I feel like I can talk to you. (laughs) That's the literal definition of an INFJ. There was a period of time where I really needed gaming. Like MMORPGs helped me out of a really rough social period in my life. I was surrounded by people, both online and offline then, that found comfort in talking to me about their life and their issues. It wasn't until much later in life that I learned about the trials of an INFJ. But when I did read about what an INFJ is, it was as if a burden was lifted and I truly felt understood because that was what I was. See, INFJ personalities tend to care and want to help others without much respect for their own happiness. Sounds a lot like the Joker character we control in Persona, right? It's so rare that I see so much of myself in a character and the characters he attracted in his journey. Take, for example, the talented girl who imprisons her future away into a tiny room with nothing but anime and games to comfort her. Because her anxiety and trauma have warped her heart so deep away from reality, she has to set goals, no matter how big or small, to assimilate back into the social world. It's not an easy thing for people to find their footing in this modern technological world we live in. So many people enthralled in otaku culture can probably relate to this. I love how Persona 5 handles her story. It's not abrasive or forceful at all. Then we have that compulsive jock who has a good heart, but can't help but get in his own way because of his big mouth and his impulsiveness. What about that bright-eyed artist living in his own little world, completely oblivious to the naive perception of life he's created for himself? Persona 5's characters are all so multi-complex with their goals and inner conflicts that I could easily associate people I care about in my own life with each of the heroes and even the antagonists in this game. There was a coach in my high school who was almost a straight-up replica of the first boss in this game. Many years later, the world found out a lot more about the things that happened because of him. But at the time, it was mere rumors spread by the student body, much like that in the in Shujin Academy in the game. Many of us heard or even noticed things that were off. But to my knowledge, nobody had the inner strength at the time to come forward. This is a similar regret that one of the Phantom Thieves contemplates as a result of the first arc in the game. Even the homeroom teacher who goes out of her way to provide players an opportunity to rest up because she understands what we're going through made me remember little details of my life that I had left behind. I had been doing poorly in my foreign language class in high school and the teacher, who was a terrible teacher by the way, (laughs) assigned me a private tutor who was slightly older than me. She became a very kind, confident to me. 
I had sporting team practices, piano lessons, band drill practices, and tutoring after school, to name a few. After all that stuff I concluded, I would go to her home and for an hour of tutoring in the evening. There were times that I was so exhausted that I guess I dozed off while she was sitting right next to me trying to do her job. Instead of getting upset or slapping me awake, she put my jacket over my shoulders and let me sleep. I can only guess what she was thinking, but maybe she didn't see a delinquent that my teacher had assumed I was because of my grades. Maybe she saw a kid overwhelmed with forced extracurricular activities who just needed somebody to have their best interests first instead of results. These are act of kindnesses that I'll never forget, but they're also things that I I don't have in the forefront of my mind on a day-to-day basis. Persona 5, oddly enough, helped remind me of my humanity. (laughs) I had become the very same type of adult forcing societal will into what I assumed was right, into not only my outlook in life, but my own perception of humankind. Life is strange. I've avoided Persona and the Megami Tensai franchises my entire life. Yet, for some reason, this is the game that I need it right now. And to be able to experience it for the first time where I am right now in life, I can't begin to explain how deep of an emotional connection I have with this game. You see, when I learned after maybe 20 hours or so in the game that you can actually play a game console in your room and it has some benefit to you as an overall person, I took a second to gather my thoughts because that was what I needed to see for my mental health. I've been forced fed my entire life that TV and video games are only bad influences. Nothing good can come out of it. It's a waste of time and a distraction from real things that I should be doing. For a game to literally show you that it's okay to take time out of saving the world to relax and play a video game in the attic on a rainy night, because it's beneficial to your character building. That's special. It reinforces to me what I knew in my heart since I was a kid. Video games can make us better people. Video games can make us healthier people. They can make us kinder people. And the most important thing I remembered that Persona 5 reminded me is that I'm a person I have bad days and good days like everyone else, but they're all part of progressing my story. The same goes for having curry with my best friend or just walking through a shopping district for no reason at all one night in October. Nothing is a waste of time in life. In Persona 5, whenever you return home at night to the coffee shop, the owner always says, Ah, you're back. I am back. So the other day, I was on a Zoom call at work, and I just dropped everything I was saying, and I told them, subscribe.